Hi. Good noon. It's good to see you today. I think we're live. So there's always this weird, awkward thing at the beginning where we don't know, but I think we are. Uh, good noon, y'all. It's good to see you on this Monday. I, um, as always, get to be the one to recommend worship to you. I also have here my um, Rainbow Narwhal, which is uh, who played in our children's message yesterday, uh, God. This was a gift from a dear and wonderful friend, and I love it. There have been so many of you reaching out to me that the only way you're going to see God from now on is as a rainbow narwhal, and I don't hate it, to be honest. So um, I love that. Uh, the music yesterday was great, as always. Like, I feel like I'm just saying the same thing every Monday, which is that if you're not in worship, you are totally missing out. Um, an amazing sermon on Jonah yesterday by Pastor Ginger. Um, it was a good one. They all are, but it was a good one. So I hope that you'll check it out. Perhaps share it with somebody that you think might uh, benefit from it. We have lots of things happening at Foundry, and I hope that you're plugged in in all the ways. If you um, are looking for any kind of details or anything on what's going on, you can always find out information on our website, www.foundryumc.org. Um, and if you aren't following us on Twitter and Instagram, uh, Foundry UMC DC in those places, and, uh, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Foundry UMC DC. Uh, that, those are ways that you can find out and uh, stay plugged in to all the things that are going on. We also have e-newsletters and stuff that come out. So if you're interested in any of that, just drop us a, a comment or a message um, on Facebook and we'll get you hooked up. Um, today's going to be weird. <laughs> it's usually weird, right? Like if you're here with me, I feel like you know that it's going to be weird. So here's where we are. Um, are there any other Rubik's Cube nerds out there? I'm really curious. Um, I see Blake is commenting, go heels. So we're going to have a real <clears throat> issue. Um, go Duke. Uh, curious if I have any other Rubik's Cube nerds out there. I love a Rubik's Cube. Um, I don't know if you have one of these lying around the house. This is going to sound strange, but this is really a meditative practice for me um, to do the Rubik's Cube. And... Um, I love it so much. And so I just thought it might be fun. I had cash uh, mess it up. And I thought it might be fun to solve the Rubik's Cube and kind of talk through it a little bit and talk about why it's um, a little bit of a meditative practice. And then maybe draw some comparisons between like scenarios that happened with the Rubik's Cube and life. So I told you it's going to be weird, but just hang on. I think it'll be kind of um, something. So usually what happens is. Um, you start with the white uh, side. So wherever the white is in the middle, this is the, the top side. So you start like that. And what you want to get is a cross, actually, um, which is kind of the first thing that was connected. So you move all the pieces into place to get a cross, like that. So you have this white cross. And the biggest thing is that they're connected to their middles. So you'll see blue here, you'll see red here, you'll see green here. They're connected to their middles. And now you want to get these corners into place. Um, so we'll do that quickly. The thing I love about the Rubik's Cube is that sometimes it's um, super rhythmic and that part of it is kind of soothing. The other part, um, though, that sometimes isn't as soothing <laughs> is that uh, things will get turned around to where you have to make, you know, 10 or 11 moves instead of two. So here is what's called the first layer, which is complete. So you'll see this top layer is complete. And again, you want to make sure that these middles are matched up. Um, and this may be a reach, but it really is something that I think about. I like to think about what's going on in the middle of me. So the middle of me is my head and my heart. Are those things connected? Is there some kind of cognitive dissonance between what's happening and my connection to it? Um, I used to, when I was in seminary at <clears throat> Duke, 
uh, one of my professors used to say, it feels like you are constantly up here and that your head and your heart aren't connected. He was like, so what I want you to do is try to create some kind of a tightrope that you can just walk between your head and your heart, between your thinking and your feeling. Um, and anyway, in the Rubik's Cube, the middle is the thing that holds it all together. If your middles get screwed up, then your cube gets screwed up. So speaking about uh, the middle, next thing we're gonna do is a second layer here. And one of the things that's really frustrating about the second layer is that, okay, so you'll see right here, this is red face right here, this is blue face right here, and you'll see there's a corner here that is blue and orange, which means that this corner is in the wrong place, right? And it actually needs to be over here in this corner. Um, and so to get it there, you actually have to do the move to get this out and then do another move to get it back in, which can be really frustrating. Um, same thing here, orange face, green face, wrong corner is here. But what I like to do is find the one that needs to go there, which is this one, and use it to knock the other one out. So um, we're gonna do that. <laughs> Okay, so we got that orange and green one in place, and what that did was it knocked out this green and red one, which we're gonna use to put right here and knock out that red and blue one. And I will say, for this algorithm, for the second layer, there's a, uh, you can do it both with your right hand and with your left hand, so right side of the cube, left side of the cube. I'm right-handed. So sometimes I get a situation where every single piece I have to put in the second layer, I have to do with my left hand. And that's also really frustrating. And it reminds me of situations in my life where I feel like I either don't have the tools to do what I need, or I'm reaching for the tools, but they're out of reach. Um, or yeah, just spaces where I'm like, I could be doing this so much better. Um, you know, if I had, if I had a different opportunity, or if I had, you know, whatever, kind of all of these um, wishful thinking situations. And I find myself doing that while I'm doing the cube. And I'm like, it's not taking me any longer. <laughs> like what a lesson that is, is that like, I feel like I'm weakest in my left hand. Um, but what I will say too, is that when I'm doing the left side of the cube, like if, if a situation like that happens and I have to do all of the moves on the side of my left hand, I learn so much more about how the cube is actually moving. And that's the other thing I wanna talk about is that like in our weaknesses, sometimes we are afforded all kinds of opportunities to learn and to grow. Um, and what we can realize is that sometimes weaknesses that we think are weaknesses are actually strengths in um, sort of nurturing our intuition. And so I wanna talk about that because, the, and. Well, we'll get to that. So remind me if I don't say something about intuition and rhythm and algorithms. So same situation here, red face, blue face, these are in the wrong place, kind of rhymed. We're gonna knock that um, blue and orange one out and put it back in, that's what I'm doing right now. And so now what we have is a second layer complete. So this entire second layer is complete here. And again, if you're just joining us, uh, if you're a Rubik's Cube nerd, I wanna know, um, because I love it so much. So now, the white face at the top is our top face. So we're gonna solve the bottom and we're gonna flip it over. And so what you wanna get on the bottom is another cross. So we're gonna do that. That was simple enough. So there's that cross. Now remember what I said about the middles matching up. So this middle doesn't match. So if we wanna pull it over to where it does, well, let's see, let's try to pull it over to where it does match. Okay, so we've got the red middle matching. Now none of the rest of them do, except for this one. Um, so we have to do something to make those middles match up. So we pull out that particular algorithm. And now what happened is that we have two middles side by side that match. So we have to do that same algorithm again. And you'll see that sometimes um, 
the cubes work like the the cubes work in your favor, and so you won't have to do the same algorithm four, five, six times. Um, sometimes you just get a lucky draw. Uh, that was not the case this time. We had to do that one twice. So now what you'll see is that you have your middles lined up. Again, thinking about that head and heart, um, the connection between thinking and feeling. Um, okay, so now next, you guessed it, corners. You'll notice that these corners are not in the right places. Um, so we'll have to fix them, right? So <clears throat> we'll just continue to do this particular algorithm until we find one that's in the right place, which we did. There it is. It's in the right place. It's the wrong sort of orientation, but it's in the right place. Once we find one that's in the right place, then they all sort of get knocked into place. And again, there are two with the wrong orientation. And then all that's left to do is turn those around. And then you've got a fully solved Rubik's Cube. Um, the thing I wanted to say earlier about algorithms and intuition, um, sometimes it feels like there's a prescription for how you do something, um, which for the Rubik's Cube would be these algorithms that are set uh, for how you solve each layer. And sometimes they're really super helpful. Um, but what I've figured out, the more I do the Rubik's Cube, the more I rely on my intuition. So the things that... Um, that you know, I could do mindlessly uh, with the algorithm. I can actually do quicker if I'm using my intuition. And so I wanted to um, close with a prayer and sort of try to summon some intuition for us today, kind of tap into that um, tightrope between head and heart uh, to get connected to ourselves and to think about ways that we're um, managing stress, ways that we're hearing God's call ways that we are um, perceiving what's going on around us, the way that we're supporting one another and supporting our, um, perhaps our family and friends, all of that uh, are, is, byproduct, is a byproduct of listening and tapping into your intuition. So um, let's pray together. Deep breath, inhale, exhale, invite you to enter a posture of prayer that is most comfortable for you. Perhaps another inhale and another exhale. God, in ways that we feel disconnected to ourselves or disconnected to you, we ask for revelation. Help us to come to know our thoughts and feelings as they hold hands together. Help us to discern in the ways of spirit, to listen closely for your voice as it rattles amongst our bones. Grant us a meditative spirit that we might feel a strong connection to you and to your calm, to your peace, to your grace. Invite us into deeper connection with ourselves because it's in that place that we'll find divine love and presence. that we may be deeper connected to the world, to the earth, to your people. Help us to know that sometimes our weaknesses help us make some strides with our intuition. And that sometimes our intuition is silenced when we think we've got it all figured out. God, in a time such as this, 
when it feels like we were not made for this. Remind us that we were made in love and for hope for the world. As you knit us together in the womb, God, you continue to knit us together outside the womb. And as we have experienced many a broken body over the last year, We pray that we might be symbols of hope and of restoration and that we may use this gift of life that we have to continue to draw ourselves and others closer to you. For these and all things we pray together in the name of the triune God. Amen. Well, told you it'd be weird. Um, it's been a fun, this was fun for me, so I hope it was fun for you. Again, if you are a Rubik's Cube nerd, I would love to know or hear about that. Um, I'll plug my Twitter. I'm like slowly getting more and more into Twitter. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at RevKCVC, at R-E-V-K-C-V-C. Um, yeah, and I hope you'll stick around to our social media. Tomorrow you'll see Pastor Will live at 10 a.m. Uh, Wednesday is Pastor Ginger at 12. Kelly, uh, Pastor Kelly on Thursday at 10 a.m. And Pastor Ben on Friday, Ben at 10. Um, so I hope you'll stick around. Um, and hang out with us this week. We love you. We miss you. If there are ways that we can be praying for you specifically, please reach out to us. Uh, we, as a clergy team, gather together every Wednesday to pray for all of you. And so we would love to know specific ways in which we can pray. Um, do something for your spirit this week, please. And as always, good noon, everybody.